Hello, welcome to the Josh Walensky Show. And tonight I have three of my favorite people here. Good New Yorkers and just good people. Walter Gambine, who's a member of the West Side Neighborhood Alliance that's growing by leaps and bounds. And Pamela Timmons, filmmaker. She has done a notorious job, a wonderful job, on a film called The Clearwater Nation, the story of Pete Seeger and that dynamic craft that's cleaning up the Hudson River, <laughs> the Clearwater. <laughs> and next to Pamela is the Vice President of Friends of the Clearwater, Mr. Jonathan Rubin. Pamela, tell us about your film and uh, how much work it went into, and please tell us about Pete Seeger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Pete Seeger is 90 years young this year, and it's just been my honor to be documenting the last 40 years of his work with Clearwater. Um, let's see. Uh, I decided to uh, work with Jeff Rumpf on bringing forth the 2008 Clearwater F Festival, the Great Hudson River Revival. I'm sure you've been to it. Mm -hmm. WBAI is, uh, mm -hmm. the, has had it on the air. And um, at, at that point, it was a, a different kind of festival in the opening because Pete brought forth his indigenous musicians and some elders, and he played an indigenous flute to give respect to the Native American elders. And uh, Tiho Kudsen Ghost Horse was blessing the river. And it was very special. And then I brought forth uh, a series of performances by Pete to tell the story with an interview. And then it came together uh, at the end with another scene at the festival. And they're looking to bring it onto their website uh, this spring. Uh, the DVD will be for sale. Ah, so. ah zoom in on that. Uh. Gloria. I uh, want to say, when I moved into the Upper West Side in 1962, on a warm Sunday, there were still six or eight people swimming in the Hudson River. Because in those <laughs> years, if you were a good swimmer, you could swim in the Hudson River in 1962. That's a year before Kennedy was assassinated. The only one who I know who swims in the Hudson River now is a, uh, a very unique human being by the name of Sabas. Sabas walks around all summer in his bathing suit, and he swims in the Hudson River, and he goes in Washington <laughs> Heights, Morningside Park, Riverside Park, <laughs> and he seems to know how to do it. But I wouldn't recommend it for the rest of us. Uh, could you tell us some of the achievements that Pete Seeger and the Clearwater have accomplished well, in their projects? Um, well, they have moved forward a very significant grassroots education movement for the environment. And so each year there's at least 1,500 or more students that go on board and they learn uh, what the soup was at the turn of the century and how a little bit about sailing. They help hoist the sail. They throw a net overboard and they bring up some of the fish and they teach the children hands-on. So that's been really significant. Uh, they worked on the uh, Clean Water Act, and, and right now they are working on a legal battle to stop the relicensing of Indian Point. Ah, mm. bravo! Yeah. yeah, stop the licensing of the relicensing of Indian Point. Yeah, it never should have been built there to start yeah, I, with. I, I've heard things about nuclear power, which um, are uh, I can't think of the adjective. Uh, Scary. It is. 
Well, actually, yeah. Indian Point is, is a problem for a few reasons. Indian Point has the New York State uh, Licensing Board um, admitting contentions of metal fatigue, pipe erosion, fuel pool leaks, and impacts on of the cooling systems on the Hudson River fisheries, as well as the fact that that when Indian Point fuel pools have been drained, strontium-90, a radioactive material, and cesium-137, mm. another radioactive material, have gone into the water supply at 70 gallons a day. Oh, that's really the, frightening. The thing that uh, disheartens me, that's a good word, it kind of disheartens me, uh, is the, the knowledge of the presence of so many people in the world, including people who run these plants and have the financial interests, the greed, the, the fact that they don't seem to feel feelings or take any kind of helpful cognizance that would stop their greed and make them start to deal with their fellows and their, and their brothers and sisters as um, as needy and, and, and as worthy of, you know, taking care, taking care of, rather than taking mm -hmm. care of their own pockets. I, I think it's, it's really, I'm just very saddened by it and, and very disheartened to hear that, to, to know this, that um, uh, they don't really care. They, 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 it's, it's like, to me, in, in, a, in a primal sense, I've been involved in primal therapy, they don't feel their feelings very much about other people. <laughs> no. Or when, when the bottom line comes up in their board, me their board meetings or at their business, um, when the bottom line comes up, it's always towards uh, taking care of that, the bottom line. You and know. the hell with people, the hell with no. what people really yeah. need, the hell with people's safety and health and what, people, what other people feel. You know, Walter, uh, you make a very, very cogent, interesting point. But you know what I have found with people, and I'll tell you the really truth, most people are decent underneath, but they just don't understand. That is really the right way to approach it. They don't understand. And I live, I've lived in many different climates in the United States. I'm a LaGuardia Franklin Delano Roosevelt baby. <laughs> and a few days ago, uh, Bloomberg made a, must, made a statement, and it was repeated in Sunday's Times, mm. that the brokers on Wall Street must get their huge uh, bonuses. I heard it Because too. if they don't get their bonuses, they won't be able to buy property and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and be taxed. And, and taxed taxes. and all that. <laughs> now, to, for a LaGuardia Roosevelt baby to hear a statement like that is <laughs> ludicrous because at least under Roosevelt and LaGuardia, we did not have a society that did not understand the difference between the rich and the poor, that did not have, today we have a society that is not class consciousness, you well, know. Well you I mean, even today in the senior center, some old lady said to me, I can't stand the looters in Haiti. They make me sick. Where do those hoodlums come from? If she was hungry, without water, without food, without shelter, <laughs> she would know where those looters come from. And I had to say to her, I know I was a bit irrelevant, but I had to say to her, it's funny that you never say anything like that about the greedy landlords, you know, that they should be punished. But why should all these looters in Haiti be punished when they are caught completely without food, water, or even a future.
Yeah, the, the mm. landlords are looters. Mm. Well, actually, in a, in a meaningful sense, the landlords are looters too. Actually, the class divisions in our society are a direct result of property and money. And it, as a matter of fact, the landlords that I see almost on a two or three times a week basis in the housing court, it's mo it's all about their property, their money, mm. and the human yeah. beings that fall the, through the cracks are only cared for because the judges established about 15 years ago the guardian ad litem program which said you know a college educated person isn't necessarily going to understand the hair splitting of the law to understand how to to survive a housing court case and there is a class war or a, a war where there are a lot of have-nots in our society who are being excluded from the bonuses that they made at Goldman Sachs or at Solomon Brothers. And those people, you know, it's very ironic that they got bonuses because they needed a bailout too. And they needed a bailout so that they could get those bonuses. But a lot of us are struggling just to even make a living right now. Mm. And you know, without any further ado, I want everyone at home to see the miraculous work of Pamela Timmons, our <laughs> filmmaker. So uh, Gloria and Shanti, uh, <laughs> could you roll that tape uh, that, uh, from Clearwater Nation? There's, uh, I think it's about 25 minutes. Yeah, it's 25 a 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. I watched it last night about three times, and I'm going <laughs> to watch it many more times, and I'm going to show it to a lot of young people. Now, editing, you did the editing and everything. Yeah, I did. Where did you learn to edit like that? Yeah. Uh, I was really fortunate. Uh, independent filmmaker suggested a standalone editing system and gave me some, you know, instruction, and I just moved it right along myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Digital video is like that right now. We're so lucky. It's much easier to edit than ever before. So. And your love for Pete Seeger. It's on the air. Okay. We're on. Yeah. So do you have an extra copy of the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. new version? Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, I'll give I mean, you. All right. Thanks. All right. Maybe I'll give it to my daughter. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, I can't promise she'll watch it. She's a very, yeah. she's a very finicky kid. Oh. I'd like her to see it. Yeah. I'd like her to get educated. Oh, good. Yeah. Does she like to go on the internet and watch oh, YouTube? Oh, she, yeah. She's it's, it's up on YouTube. Oh, it is. This, this, yeah. this is all on YouTube? Is yeah. Oh. yeah. The sound is supposed to be coming Okay, well, then we don't need the actual. Oh. You'll just give me the website. Oh, yeah, you know how to put the sound to it? Over okay, the there. The uh oh. To a there we go. Where no human voice had ever been heard. Now, the natives, the first Americans, can be recognized as the first environmentalists. What better way to celebrate Clearwater's grassroots festival of art, music, and activism than with the knowledge of traditional Native wisdom? Mother Earth and Father Son, hear the voices of your children, thankful voices of your children for the gifts you made appear. Hey, hey. Solar energy powers the festival. The panels are installed by an expert while teaching students about clean, green, renewable energy. The Clearwater started uh, 40 years ago, in 1969. And we had a batch of young people uh, coming out to volunteer on the crew, and he now wants to reach their grandchildren and get them volunteering. Everything you got, 216! Hold the oh, Yeah.
a job on Cape Cod, and at, at midnight, a teenager took me out and showed me what an extraordinary thing it was to go sailing. It's not how fast you go, it's the fact that you move at all. <laughs> and the wind may be coming from the north, but if you slant your sails right, you can go northwest, and then northeast, and then northwest, and then northeast, and you use the very power of the north wind against you, and you move right into it. When I got back to the Hudson, I Big and the family let me splurge and I we bought a little plastic bathtub of sailboat and I started trying to learn to sail on the Hudson. And then I looked down in the water underneath me and found lumps of this floating by me along with the toilet paper. And the phrase that John Kenneth Galbraith used, private affluence, public squalor, came to me. I had enough money to buy this boat, but there I was sailing through toilet waste. Then a friend of mine, I don't know if he's here today, Vic Schwartz, an artist in the little town of Cold Spring, said, Pete, you know they used to have a boat uh, sloops on the Hudson with a boom 70 feet long. I said, don't give me any. Only an America's Cup racer was that big. He said, no, they had a lot of them. They were called Hudson River sloops. The broad and flat, and they carried cargo right from the Dutch days on into about the 20th century and then the steamboats took the business and the railroads took the business and in exactly a hundred years ago almost oh, called exactly. sloops of the hudson saying these were the most beautiful boats we ever knew and they will never be seen again with respect for the mother earth and father son pete plays flute with indigenous musicians the beauty and the devotion that Pamela Timmons put into this film. It's just very, very special. And as I say, last night 
it was like three in the morning, and I think I went to bed 6 a.m. because <laughs> I saw it three times. And of course, <laughs> I love Teokas and Ghost Horse and his terrific flute playing. And you know, he does a program on WBAI about indigenous peoples throughout the world. And my friend David Amron, who is a very, very dear, talented musician and designer of his own musical instruments, was really, really makes his presence known on this wonderful documentary by Pamela Timmons. Pamela, tell us how we can get this film. I mean, uh, wh what website and yeah. so on? Yeah, you can go on to clearwater.org, and uh, they will be having it on their online shop. Or you can uh, email me at pamaramaproductions at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be shown at the Jefferson uh, Market Library. There's going to be a presentation the first Monday of April. It, I believe that's April 6th at 6 to 8. Uh, and it's going to be shown at other li libraries. Uh, I had a really good turnout at the Midtown Manhattan Library on a very cold Tuesday night. Over 100 people came. Uh, and then we uh, had a Q&A afterwards. Mm. Uh, one of the Clearwater's board members came, Ross Gould, and he answered Q&A about the Legacy Project. And a singer-songwriter uh, ended the uh, the program with a beautiful tune about Mother Earth. So, so that worked out really well. Yeah, Pete's uh, personality comes out in that film. I know Pete Seeger personally. I, I and Raymond Leventhal organized free concerts with Pete Seeger over at the City College Bookstore <laughs> when it was institutional in Finley Hall. I also worked with Pete Seeger, Agnes Cunningham, and Gordon Friesen at Broadside Magazine. I also worked with Izzy Young, who's now in Scandinavia, over at the Folklore Center with Pete Seeger. He is really my mentor as to what a human being really <laughs> should stand for and what a human being who has feelings about our planet and about his fellow human beings and about all the creatures in the world, what that kind of a person should mm. really be. There isn't a phony bone in Pete Seeger's body. Thank you, Pamela, <laughs> for producing such a marvelous film. Oh, I'm very glad that I was able to do this. And I agree, yeah. Pete Seeger has been a hero of mine ever since I was a little girl, singing his songs, and he continues to do great work. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so what do you have to say for you about this, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <coughs> oh, a, a little present reality. I, I have been feeling a little um, stuttery and hesitant in my speech. I wish I could have spoken a little more articulately, but um, as did. always, give it a little while and people <laughs> loosen up, including myself. Um, I wanted to say about the, the mayor and those bonuses. Um, it's, it's kind of a self-centered statement, you know. I mean, th this all relates. This all relates to the financial things, uh, the, the reasons why the lakes and rivers and the air is getting so polluted. That's it's right. Because people, there, there are, uh, you know, um, the yeah. super rich and, and, and the corporate biggies who want wealth and power. That's exactly on you know, the, the energy pr process called f um, horizontal hydraulic f um, hydrofracking, which is a, or, or fracking, uh, f hydrofracturing, I meant to say. The, the, the whole process is an economic process. Fracking is it has been proven as it's been used in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Colorado to cause seizures and cancer and death. And, you know, but at the same time, it was a process created by Cheney's 
uh, Halliburton Inc. And yes, it's all about economics. The, the local communities upstate in New York, they might have people working more steadily if the, if, if the energy corporations are allowed to come into New York State and frack. Uh, they also might have a, a greater tax base, and they may have um, people selling their land that they thought was worthless, which might now be worth millions. And then the final point, we're in an interconnected society internationally, and it might release us from any Middle East oil or petroleum dependence. So it's totally economics. And the yeah. corporate side says human health doesn't matter. Let's make the profits bigger and better. But the problem is fracking, if it's done in the Marcellus Shale, will cause chemical pollution into the New York City water supply through the oh. Catskill Delaware water system, which will kill people. <laughs> okay, if I guys, can finish I wanna, what I want to say about the mayor. I want to say one those, thing. Those, can, this uh, has those, been uh, those the Josh Walensky uh, Can I finish show? my point about the mayor? And that money for the, the bonuses for the execs uh, that the mayor was complaining about, use the money to pay for jobs for people. That's right. It, mm -hmm. That'll get taxes. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Thank you, Josh. I just want to <laughs> say, I just want to say, this has been the Josh Walensky Show. And coming up is going to be a program on Haiti with Collier Clark and an, a very famous Haitian professor from Boston who contacted me last night. And also, I'm going to do a program on Uganda, which going in, on in Uganda is nobody's business. And by the way, the Haitian program will also be played over WBAI 99.5. I've already gotten permission from the program <laughs> director, Anthony Bates, to do it. So I want to thank all of you, <laughs> Pamela Timmons. Thank you, Josh. And uh, Jonathan Rubin. Thank you so much, Josh. It's a and pleasure. And Mr. Walter Gambin. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. the opportunity. And uh, let's, uh, let's do away with the greed, because That's greed right. is something we do not need. Bravo. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. People's survival is what and we need. Let's also mm -hmm. get a copy generous. of Clear Water Nation. Yeah. And a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful uh, DVD by Pamela Timmons and Pete Seeger. Yeah, to uplift <laughs> our spirits. <and laughs> yeah. It was the wealth is our joyfulness. Yeah. The wealth is our happiness. That's right. Yeah. 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 I Be didn't generous. mean to cut you off, Walter. Uh, I know. I, I thought I had to something to add. Yeah. I know. Well, <laughs> well, it happens. <laughs> it happens. Nobody's perfect, and, and yeah. I'm no. glad I had the opportunity to you finish making my point. Yeah. But I'm I had. Well, it was a it too. was a lead in. Yeah, it was a lead in yeah. to the the environmental effects of energy.